On September 1st, Hurricane Dorian's cataclysmic storm surge swallowed up this postcard in paradise. Drawing a line in the sand between a changing climate and island living. And most Bahamians will tell you it's become a deal with the devil to live here. I was actually fighting right here with the door, fighting with the door, you know, to let the pressure out so that the roof doesn't go in. Brendan Archer was making his own deal to ride out the storm in the hopes he'd have a home once it was all over. After the pressure came so hard, your, your ears start to ring, you, you just try and loose, the door just slams shut, and then you, you just plop, plop, everything just start going up. And the deal paid off, barely. The ceiling in here was, it was doing a roller coaster, just up and down, up and down. Luck and topography would spare his home from Dorian's worst. I already cleaned up this house, so now it's just now getting materials, finding ways of what I could do to make a couple of dollars to help patch things up until things start to fall in line. That's the Bahamian spirit, we're strong. I born here, I ain't going nowhere. My, my family was here from 1700s. That's way back, and we still have the Archer title from then till now. So I ain't got nowhere to go. The 25-foot storm surge that fell short of Linden's home on a hill devastated the neighborhood below. The mud was a shanty town built on top of an old lake that flooded into a mountain of mud. It was the most vulnerable spot to ride out the storm, and it's where most of the people died. You're coming into the ground zero of Hurricane Dorian. Wayne Neely is a Bahamian meteorologist who's written 14 books on island hurricanes. He's considered the foremost hurricane hunter in this part of the world. He's come to Marsh Harbor to hunt down Dorian's DNA. As we walk through this, you, you hear the crunch. There's a stench here that you is smells it's like unmistakable. Yes. It smells like death. Yes, it is, and it's it's from dead bodies. You also have dead animals, the dogs, the cats. They, there was no match because they, was, they couldn't go anywhere. This, this area was flooded, it was engulfed in water. After 30 years of covering hundreds of storms, Wayne knew this hurricane would be different. Dorian's lethal storm surge charged several miles inland. So when the storm arrived, he felt as if he was carrying the weight of the nation on his shoulders, delivering a catastrophic forecast to his country, his friends, and his family. I knew what comes along with that, a Category 5 hurricane, one of the strongest the region has ever seen, and the strongest the Bahamas has ever seen. And I knew that beneath that storm, beneath that image, there was going to be great devastation in my country. I knew then that the death toll is going to be significant. Beneath the devastation and heartbreak, Wayne looks for Dorian's atmospheric paper trail. The intense tornado-like debris and nuclear bomb landscape is unmistakable. Cat 5 storm signatures are like no other. Wayne's post-hurricane analysis is invaluable. He carefully captures it all, tracing Dorian's steps and peeling away the layers. There was very little wind shear occurring with the storm to weaken the storm. Uh, the waters were extremely warm. It was warmer than normal. I expected it to be a strong storm, but I'd never expect it to be a Category 5 intensity storm. I don't think no one did. Dorian would deliver a series of surprises leading up to landfall. First, it threaded a needle between mountainous Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, keeping its lethal core intact and over warm water for days. The eye would then recenter about 75 miles north, making forecast tracks even less reliable. Long-range computer models use satellite data, but that's limited and data poor. So when a hurricane is far from land, getting accurate tracks is harder, especially when there's been a significant shift in the hurricane. But there would be one more surprise. The weakest link in tropical forecasting, hurricane intensity. Dorian rapidly intensified from 150 miles an hour to an explosive 185 miles an hour in just nine hours, a rate never seen before in an Atlantic storm this powerful. Those 185 mile per hour winds, 
equivalent to a 10-mile wide EF3 tornado. It bulldozed huge swaths of Abaco and Grand Bahama Islands. Dorian's wall of water reached miles beyond the mud. Wayne arrives at this Anglican church in Abaco, a designated evacuation center. Dorian rushed through these walls with a five-foot storm surge. It must have been terrifying for them. Imagine that for 30 hours battling the storm, uh, battling the, the water up to waist level, and you also had the winds, the torrential rainfall along with that, so that must have been terror for them. That torrential rain became another one of Dorian's deadly signatures. Estimates put rain totals over 35 inches. And the forecast would become a real nail-biter as the Bermuda High that was steering Dorian shifted east, collapsing the steering currents, slowing down Dorian, a dead man's walk across the Bahamas. Even with all the technology that we have in play, with hurricane hunters flying all the time in and out of these hurricanes, truth is, they still can surprise us. They still can create this level of devastation like Hurricane Dorian did. But now there's an opportunity to change the rule book itself and perhaps fly drones at high altitudes to get ahead of these hurricanes. And forecasters need all the help they can get. While hurricane track forecasts are getting better each year, predicting the rate at how quickly major hurricanes can intensify is still not well understood. But there's plenty of data that shows big storms are becoming more frequent. 2019 is the fourth consecutive year a Category 5 hurricane has formed in the Atlantic Basin. That's never happened since records began in 1851. Dorian tied the hurricane of 1935 as the strongest landfalling hurricane in this part of the world. And there's no record of a Category 5 hurricane lashing a landmass for nearly 24 hours like Dorian. Forecasters would like to track hurricanes in real time to provide more accurate data on steering patterns. Such continuous testing of the atmosphere could detect the tiniest of wobbles that could determine who needs to evacuate and when. We cannot lift the Bahamas up and take it elsewhere. All indications are the hurricanes will become more frequent and some cases argue that it will become more intense. And Dorian is actually showing that these hurricanes are becoming stronger and more frequent. And it's us as meteorologists to pay close attention to climate change. Island living after Dorian is far from the perfect postcard these islands once represented. Hurricane survivors must adapt and change themselves if they still want their ticket to paradise. Now, tough questions about sustainable island living have moved to the front burner. The Bahamian coat of arms perhaps more poignant than ever before, charging to move forward, upward, onward, together. Even after the devil, storms into town. For My Radar, I'm Chief Digital Meteorologist Leslie Hudson in the Bahamas.